What does it mean to be biblically healthy, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually? Welcome, I'm your host Dalton, and this is the Iron Lion Podcast. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Iron Lion Podcast. For those of you that follow week to week, it has been a month since my last podcast, and it was a very interesting time away. Uh, For context, if anyone is listening to this 20 years from now, the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, has caused the world to basically shut down. There's no toilet paper, and we have all watched everything on Netflix and Disney+. In all honesty, I personally have had a really hard time this past month. Uh, Work for me did not slow down at all, which I'm grateful for. But it has really taken a lot out of me because of the uh, workload increase. I found that when I'm overly busy and overly worked, every aspect of my health begins to decrease physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. But today, we're going to talk about that and how in our moments of vulnerability, we can become captivated by thoughts that are not of the Lord. For me, the thought that made me quit, and I never quit, is you can't do anything right. Yeah, I know that sounds immature and... (laughs) unrealistic to think that you can hit the mark every single time, but I put a lot of pressure on myself, and I'm learning uh, to give myself a little bit more grace on that, but so here's the question. How do we become captivated, or how does something attract and hold the interest and attention of, or charm us? So let's take a moment and do a quick exercise Pause the podcast if you choose to uh, join in, but take about two minutes and just analyze how you speak to yourself inwardly. Is it negative thoughts, positive thoughts? Are you worried? Are you afraid of something? Are you motivated? Are you showing insecurity? How are you speaking to yourself? So if we do not know how to cultivate the positive thoughts, and allow them to direct us through our every day, then we, by default, allow the negative and destructive thoughts to take control. For me, the you can't do anything right was the lie that I chose to believe, and because of that, it cost me a month of possible personal growth and uh, debilitated me and put me into a depression, actually. It wasn't until I began to pray again and ask God what the problem was that was causing so much pain that I learned that I had lost focus and allowed the negative thoughts and negative things in my life to tie itself to my identity rather than just being a child of God. So here is a plan of action. An exercise to help see the big picture of what may be going on in your life. Journal or write down your worries and get them out of your head. And then pray about them. There's just something about seeing them on paper that takes the power away from them. And then think of new things that will captivate you. What is God speaking to you? What are His promises? What is His vision for your life? What are things that you are grateful for? There are so many heavenly focused things that can keep us anchored and protected from being caught up in depression and an identity crisis. The Bible says, Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God that's Hebrews 12 2 
English Standard, Standard Version. We must keep our eyes fixed. And I know it's hard to always be aware of our thoughts and even try to stay in control of them, but we must ask ourselves the question, is this thought from the Lord? Or will it lead me away from the Lord? The Bible commands us to take every thought captive. It says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. So for a moment, I would like you to consider that every single one of our thoughts is a foundation of a decision, okay? It's estimated that the average adult makes about 35 semi-conscious decisions a day. That means some of these decisions we make, we're not even conscious of. Say, for example, we walk into a room and we hit the light switch that we're just always used to hitting. It's habit by then. You, you are, you're semi-conscious that you made that decision. It didn't take up a whole lot of mental energy for you to be able to make that decision. As a matter of fact, you probably didn't have to think about it very much. All you knew was that you was in a dark room and you couldn't see anything. So you didn't want to be in a dark room and you did want to see things. So you turned the light on. Okay. So I'm not asking you to make less decisions in a day. Okay. But I think it would be a great opportunity for us to figure out what decisions we are making to be more conscious of the decisions that we are making, okay? It says that we are semi-conscious, but if we make a point to be more aware of each decision that we make, that gives us kind of a blueprint of where our thought processes are, okay? So if you're driving down the road, and some of you may be driving down the road right now listening, and you probably noticed that the audio changed a little bit, I'm hoping for the better, um, it seems that I was a little bit too close to the mic, but anyway, um, if you're driving down the road right now and you are in bad traffic, which with the coronavirus, there's not a whole lot of people on the road from where I'm at. So traffic has been absolutely heavenly. Uh, but besides that fact, somebody tries to merge into your lane and they don't see you there. You know, some of us, our first thought is one of anger. Okay. Anger leads us to a decision that is probably not going to be godly. So it is the effect of or consequence of you being provoked to anger. Okay, So some people may cuss them out or flip them off or tell them to pull over on the side of the road or some people may try to run them off of the road. Who knows? But I'm praying that's not the case. But the fact of the matter is, is there is a thought process that happens due to a circumstance. Okay? So... With me, there were some, you know, the workload was what stimulated my thoughts, okay? What caused me to think that I wasn't going to be good at anything, okay? That there wasn't any progress going on in my life that, you know, all of these different things. There wasn't a whole lot of value being added to my life or the life of others. And so that's why that was the stimulate, that's what stimulated the thought, and then the thought came. It was my choice to respond to that thought in a positive or negative way. I did not pray about it. And then I continued on into the wrong direction. Okay. And it the consequence was that I became depressed and and a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay, so that's what we are looking at right now is what journal or write these things down. What stimul what stimulates you to certain thoughts? Okay, so if you know that a certain family member or friend or whoever is going to make you upset if you see them uh, posting something negative on social media, okay, or maybe it's not even a friend, maybe it's just somebody you somehow follow on social media and you see them, and every time you see their face, for whatever reason, you get angry. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes uh, those thoughts and those 
stimulus cause us to be in a place where we aren't even aware of the reason why we are upset. <laughs> uh, I don't know, might be going a little bit too deep here, sorry. But sometimes after scrolling through Facebook, for example, or Instagram, you know, you start to see things that trouble you. Now, in that moment, you might not be feeling the effects of seeing all of that negative stuff, okay? But later on, you look back and you're like, why is my anxiety so bad? And it was because you were consuming so much. You were being overstimulated. And because of that, because you were unaware and semi-conscious of the thoughts that you were having, you uh, were put in a place to where your decisions were affected. So maybe you was, uh, you know, a little grumpy with a family member or, you know, uh, decided to just sit inside instead of go outside and, and do a workout or something productive. You know what I mean? And so just being aware of what is stimulating you and what is causing you to be triggered, if you will, into a positive or negative place. Now, that being said, we're going to go ahead and talk about how we cultivate being stimulated in a positive way, okay? So I'll give you an example. For me, something that I've found in the past month is after I get home from work, um, I'm the type of person that if I work all day long, I feel like I wasted my day. I know that sounds really weird, but I feel like my freedom, yeah, I've got to regain a little bit of the freedom that I lost, if that makes any sense. So um, whenever I get home, I'm like, okay, I've got to go out and do something. I've got to go for a run. I've got to, you know, uh, create some apparel, you know, something, something, pro something of progress that, that is part of my passion, something that's really going to stir me up in a positive way. And so what I've been doing is I've been walking with my daughters down the road and it's been really good because it gets them out of the house because we're all quarantined It gets them out of the house it gets them active. It starts to cultivate a active lifestyle in them. I'm very excited about what that's doing just in our relationship. But, you know, just that one thing to take my mind off of work, okay, that has stimulated me to positive thinking, to positive thoughts, and has caused me to be more aware of my thoughts for the rest of the day. Okay, does that make any sense? And so... I write these awesome positive things down in my journal, okay? And my journal is not just like, and this isn't something I've been doing for years, okay? Don't get me wrong. This is something I started recently because I needed to know why I was always anxious, always angry, always feeling unsuccessful and unsatisfied, okay? And so uh, by writing all this stuff down, I could see it in front of me and now I can take action against something that I'm not okay with, okay? And we all know, we all know that if we're feeling a certain way, we don't want to feel that way. We don't want to sit there forever, okay? But some of us passively just say, this is just how it is for now, okay? But you can make a decision. You can put the plan into action as to how you're going to get out, okay? The first thing you should always do is pray, all right? God will give you the vision on how to get out of any situation or thought process that you were in or even any 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 lies that you were believing. God will give you the vision of how to get out of that. He'll give you the direction. It it is in his word on how to keep your eyes fixed on him, okay? And count it joy in trials of various kinds through the testing of your faith that it will call it it, it will it will produce perseverance. I think that's James 1, verse 2 and 3. But um, anyway, so the goal here, I know I'm probably rambling on and going all over the place, but the goal here is to get what is stimulating you onto paper, okay? What is causing you anger? What is causing you worry and fear? Now you have a prayer list, okay? After you pray about it, now you have a plan of action, okay? So, say for example, um, me and a coworker, or me and a random lady at the grocery store, we get in a fight over the last roll of toilet paper, okay? And I act way out of character for whatever reason, okay? 
Now, when I get back in my car and, you know, put the toilet paper in my trunk because obviously I won. Um, but when I get back in my car and I start getting convicted on how I treated this lady because obviously it, it was not representative of the nature of God. I've got to pray and I've got to ask God, why Why was I so uh, tore up? Why was I so uh, out of character there? You know, what caused me that anger? What caused me this or that? And, and, you know, now you have given God permission to mold you, okay? And then you've prayed. Now you have an opportunity to, to, uh, to make a change, okay? To be conscious of the next time you are placed in that situation, you can make a different decision, okay? Um, so anyway, with that being said, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just summarize it real quick. Um, number one, write down what you're worried about, what's causing you any grief, what's stimulating you in a negative way. Pray about it. Allow God to mold you. Make a better decision next time, okay? Also, Write down what is stimulating you in a positive way. Pray about it. Allow God to give you vision on how to cultivate that. Okay? So, if it is stimulating you in a positive way, uh, there are certain things that you can do. Like, for example, um, I try to walk with my girls uh, in the afternoon when I get home from work. Okay? It's a positive, progressive thing, and it causes... Uh, me to be in a better place mentally, emotionally, physically, uh, and spiritually, okay? Uh, another thing that you can do is wake up early in the morning and pray, all right? So I get up. Uh, I've been, for maybe for the past 10 days or so, I've been getting up at around 4 or 5 o'clock, and I will just walk. I'm not trying to burn too many thousand calories, uh, but I'm just walking, and I am praying. I'm reading a devotion while I'm walking. I'm allowing myself to, um, you know, get into a good place with the Lord, you know, spiritually, uh, uh, slow down for a little while and just be able to think about, you know, heavenly thoughts and positive things, you know. That way I'm not in a rush in the mornings and, you know, I start my day, I prime my day uh, in the mornings uh, that way. Anyway, so you have the opportunity to get some perspective before you begin to get faced with different decisions that you have to make throughout the day. Okay, so if you start your day in a mindset that uh, I'm going to make decisions based on the nature of God and make sure that I'm consulting God uh, as I go throughout my day then obviously you're going to grow in a lot of areas, okay? Obviously you're going to make better decisions and uh, be in a better place and, you know, have more joy, uh, you know, all of that awesome stuff. But if you just, you know, wake up and are in a negative thought process where you're like, oh, I really didn't want to go to work today, you know, sometimes it's good to have some gratitude. There are people right now that do not have an opportunity to work. They've been laid off with no pay. And, you know, their families are taking a, a, a lot of hits right now. You know, there, there are people in a lot worse place than you, I'm sure, at the moment. And uh, so sometimes it's good to get some perspective on just how blessed that you are, regardless of where you are. If you're one of those that, that have lost your job and uh, all of that, you still have your family. You still... Um, have that foundation of relationship with God. And I know that uh, it's it's hard to say, but God is going to take care of you, and um, this will pass, okay? Uh, I truly believe that, that, that this situation in this current time right now uh, is one that is testing all of us that it's causing uh, what I believe uh, to be kind of like a purging situation, okay? So like when you are trying to refine gold or any type of metal, if you're trying to purify metal, what you do is you heat that metal up and all of the, all of the unpure metal separates and floats to the top, okay? Then you can scrape that off. 
Okay, so now I think what it is is that like we we are all being refined, okay? Sometimes it takes a little bit of pressure to get us out of our comfort zones to really be honest with ourselves, to really find out that, hey, we have been complacent. We have been uh, content with where we are in our relationship with God. And sometimes it takes us getting shaken a little bit to realize that maybe we wasn't holding on to God as much as we thought we were, okay? And so I want that to be your prayer as well is to, you know, in this tough time, you know, that God is our foundation, okay? Just just like our thoughts are our foundation of our decisions, our God is our foundation of our thoughts, okay? Our God is our foundation of our life and in, in the direction that, that we choose to uh, pursue that, okay? The, the, the a value that we bring to this world is divine okay it's given from god and uh we have an opportunity to share that light all right but i think sometimes we we also need to step back and say maybe i haven't been doing okay right now and uh i need to evaluate where i'm at because i know something's not right i know that there's somewhere deeper that we can go in relationship with god and i think it's time that we pinpoint it and allow God to do some surgery, okay? So with that being said, I'm going to pray for you. And then um, if you wouldn't mind, um, I'm, I'm hoping on doing more podcasts each week. But obviously, uh, I haven't done a podcast in a month. And so um, my goal is to just do podcasts as God gives me the word. I don't... Uh, I don't feel like I, I'm one of those podcasters that, that you know, <laughs> just, you know, as the pressure comes, you know, I, I don't want to be feel obligated to, to get a word out because I don't want to step outside of maybe what God is trying to speak to me in order to, to also, um, you know, speak back to you and maybe bring some value to your life. But anyway. If you wouldn't mind going ahead and just liking and subscribing wherever it is that you were listening, uh, that would be awesome. But anyway, let's pray. Father God, I just thank you that you have a purpose for us, Father God, that that you would uh, allow us to go through hard times sometimes in order to uh, separate the things that are not of you, to make aware and expose the things that are not of you, Father God, that, that you would... Uh, you would still accept us in those moments, Lord. And I just pray that we would continue to pursue you through these things uh, so that you can do the surgery, so that you can mold us, Lord. And continue to show us these things, Father God, that way that we can lay them down at your feet and that we can become more in the image of you. We love you and we thank you in your holy, precious name. Amen. So with that being said, I love you. God bless, and don't forget to line up.